Shalom and Happy New Year. Oh, yes. To all you, my father's children, the 12 tribes of Israel that have been scattered worldwide to the four corners of the earth. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And Zion told our Rabbi, which means thank you multiplied, expanded, enlarged, thank you. First to our Abba, which means Father Yah, who allowed us to see another year. Allow us to come into this new year with a reasonable portion of our health and our strength and what we have concerning our right mind. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise to the Most High Yah. <laughs> and Zion, um, every time we experience um, newness, something new, um, we always e expect or try when it's new to do our best doesn't matter what it is if you got a new job if you want to keep the job you're going to do what do your best if you go to a new school if you've got a new program if you're in, in a, into a new relationship every, everything new is always let's put you put your best effort into it um so when it comes to every year, we find ourselves in a new year, then just by looking at the beginning of months for us means that we have completed another cycle and we say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And hopefully we have learned some things. And the question that I have, or I should say the meditation that I want to put forth tonight, because some of you all have already entered into your celebration and I wanted to, I'm out here on the West Coast, so we're kind of the last ones. I wanted to put this meditation out before the sun went down and we began our celebration. <clears throat> I wanted to, uh, I wanted to challenge us with a meditation of thought and that is that we do better and I can hear a person say well um, you, you know we gotta know better to do better and that's true but how do we know better matter of fact how do we know how do we know how to do better? What do we use as our guide? Or what do we use as our instructions? Or a manual, if you please. What do we use? What is our standard? And uh, I want to say this to you Zion about this I want, I want to say have you ever heard people say um, if you know better you ought to do better and then you realize when you look around that everybody you think know better ain't doing better <laughs> and there's a reason and it's and it's 
something to think about. First of all, we're making an assumption that people know better. It's an assumption. Because to know, basically, you know, the word know, K-N-O-W, is akin to our word knowledge. So, how can we be so sure that our people actually have knowledge? I can already hear y'all. Boy, there you go, there you go, there you go. I got my degree, I went to this school, I graduated here, I got this and that. I, I done did some Google searches. I ain't mad at you. I, I ain't mad at you. I kyoked. That just means my brother, my sister. Um, but the question still remains. How do you know that's knowledge? Because you've been educated in any kind of way. How do you know that that's knowledge? And so... If we're going to be better and do better, then we got to know better. But how do we get knowledge? And I can, I can hear, I can hear your answers. Well, man, we need to read the Bible more. For sure, we need to read. That's not the answer. And we need to pray more. That's true. That's true. You need to read the Bible, we need to pray. But that's not the complete answer. Uh... We need to treat each other right. Okay, for sure, we need to do that. How do we do that? That's not the complete answer. So, I'm praying about this and saying, yeah, we got to help our people because everyone is exposing the problems in our, in our community and in our culture, but very few people are actually offering the solution to the problem. Like, what is the solution? If we're going to do better, that means we got to know better. We're going to know better to do better. But to know, then we got to have knowledge. So the question is, how do we get knowledge? In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, get in around that seventh verse. I actually just started verse 1. I kind of left off with that yesterday, but get to that verse 7 and look at that. Look at what it says. Incredible. It's an incredible passage. If you slow it down and read it and meditate on it, it's incredible. Listen. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning. Stop. The what? The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of not. Wait, the what? No, 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 no. The love. That's not what the Bible says. No, the respect. That's not what the Bible says. See, Zion. Our culture is different. Our people, our covenant is different than everyone else's on the planet. And what you're going to discover in reading the, the Bible, what you're going to discover is that the way the Bible teaches us is oftentimes exactly the opposite of the way the beast teaches us. I know people keep saying, man, we got a problem in the, in the Israelite community. And they talk about all the different ghettos and cities and inner cities and this and that. And, and uh, I, I'll say things like this. I say, well, we tried everything. Why don't we try Torah? Ah, nah, man, we keep no Torah, man. You're going with that, man. Going with that. Ain't nobody doing that. But you just said you tried everything and nothing worked. 
And so I'm trying to figure out like, then why won't you try the Bible? Why won't you try the laws, statutes, and the commandments? And then I was reminded, oh, you can't do that because your pastor said that the law been done away with. So therefore, you can't try nothing that's been done away with. We live in the New Testament now. And the New Testament has told us to get rid of all that Old Testament stuff. And you're talking about a trick of the devil, Satan, and the demons of hell. It's got to be one of the one of the most clever demonic tricks ever pulled on people. Is to tell someone that this word fear don't mean fear. <laughs> I looked it up. And y'all gonna look it up too, because I know how you do the moray. Like, man, I'm gonna make sure he, I'm gonna fact check him. Please. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that you open your Bible. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that you went to your inner linear. Hallelujah, hallelujah, went to your Bible dictionary. Hallelujah, you Googled it. You're gonna see when you do research into this word. You're gonna see that that word has a has a connection to our word terrified. Terrified. No more. I can't use words like like fear and terror. It triggers me. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. I ain't trying to trigger nobody. Everybody's all traumatic today. Everybody has trauma. Everybody got triggers. Okay, okay, okay. But you talk. We talking about knowledge, and if you want it, the way to get it is through fear. It's the fear of young. You have to first become terrified of him. That's where it starts. Man, that's not what they taught me in the Christian church. They taught me the sweet, 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 sweet Jesus just about love. Really? That's what they talk. So they didn't tell you that the beginning of knowledge is being terrified of Yah. Once you are, once, <laughs> okay, oh my goodness, this, these, these little shorts, uh, I, I got to do them quick and get out. But I have so much to say. So I'm going to try to organize my thoughts really quick. So first of all, understand that the word fear is not a bad word, Zion. Matter of fact, Yah is the one that gave us true fear. Not timidity like it is. But Yah has not given us the spirit of, of fear. That's a bad translation. It should say to be timid concerning our walk with him. That's not the word that's used here in Hebrew. The Hebraic word here is the word that deals with being terrified the terror of Yah as a matter of fact sometimes this word is actually translated terror instead of fear so why is it that we should have terror well one is because when we are in a situation or a circumstance that causes fear healthy fear it heightens our awareness say it more right? concerning our surroundings and therefore, when our surroundings are high, uh, um, when when our awareness concerning our surrounding is heightened, we become more alert. And when you become more alert, you start moving circumspectly. In other words, you start making sure that you're doing things exactly the way it's supposed to be done so that you will stay alive, Zion. <laughs> so you can ask any, let's say a mountain climber, for instance, man, are you afraid? He said, oh, of course, my whole time I was up there. I don't ever want to lose my fear. Why? Because fear is what heightens the senses that makes me pay attention so that I don't just be up climbing this mountain 
a thousand feet off the ground willy nilly. I'm paying attention because my fear heightens my senses. I pay attention more. So therefore, we use the term now, we'll say like respect. But it's more than that. A fear um, of falling off a mountain means you're dead at the bottom, right? So you take your time. Same thing like if you were driving through the jungle, somebody said, hey man, there are lions out here and tigers. So if you're gonna get through here, you're gonna have to learn how to get through here like this. And they can start telling you instructions. And the first thing you do, be, you because of those lions in that in there, in that uh, wilderness or forest or wherever in that jungle, you are automatically going to say, okay, I need to know the instructions. So it's the fear of the lions, the tigers, and the bears in the woods that makes you say, oh, okay, tell me how to get through here alive. So the fear is the beginning of you putting yourself in a position to actually receive the wisdom, knowledge, and instructions that's going to be given to you. Fear did that. And the same way that that kind of fear or being terrified of something, that, that fear on a healthy side is also applied to parenting. Now, please don't write the more way about this. I, I am against all forms, 100% of any type of abuse toward any children. I, I'm against it more than y'all ever know. Matter of fact, I I even hate that that is a reality in, in this old crazy beast world we live in. I'm not saying that at all. And I don't believe in it. But let me also say, I shouldn't say but, people say, well, you just negated everything you said. No. So I'm going to say, in addition to what I believe about that, I also know that a healthy fear of authority will make your life better, Zion. <laughs> yes, yes. And every parent knows that. Every parent knows that there may come a time where I have to actually exercise my authority. I think y'all know what I'm saying. Over this child in a, in a corporal way, uh, in a manifestation of, 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 of strength <laughs> so that this child will pay attention to me and learn something. And I don't want to do it, but if I see my baby getting ready to touch a hot stove, I'm, I may just have to pop a hand. I may have to do it. I may have to pop a hand and say, stop. <laughs> Why? Because she needs to fear me. So when I say stop, she's going to stop because she doesn't want to get her hand popped. Why? Because it hurts. But I know that me just tapping her hand and saying stop, I know that her respecting that part of, of the parenting process will keep her from burning her hand. So she, that my, I'm, I got little daughters, right? And I have, I, you know, but I'm just making a point. My point is that a child having fear of their parents is not evil. As a matter of fact, one of the things that was really powerful when I was uh, growing up, that I mean, we we done lost this all together. Parents knew the difference between parenting and friendship, and they would definitely keep those lines in. I'm your I'm your mom. I'm your father. 
and we ain't gonna never mix those lines. Um, I can only speak for myself. Oh my goodness, I'm over time again. I can only really speak for myself <clears throat> about this, but most of what kept me out of trouble, and I, 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 any other uh, any other person growing up, I got I was in my share of trouble. But what kept me out of most trouble was my fear of my father. Yep. And I know y'all gonna say, what about your mom? Uh, only thing I really feared my mom about was telling my daddy. Because <laughs> I got to a particular age, man. Mama couldn't do that unless she gonna grab a gun and shoot me. <clears throat> that was not my mama's tool. My mom was tool to keep fear in the heart of the children was, I'm gonna tell your daddy. And so therefore, after after understanding the difference between that my dad is not my brother, my dad is not my not my friend, my dad is not no, my father is in a position of authority and he can't exercise his authority over me at any time and he can do whatever he wants to because back in those days boy the laws was real lax so my point is you grew up with a healthy fear but that fear was the beginning of learning everything that he tried to teach without the fear the learning is not going to be there now I'm not saying you can't learn things but you won't get knowledge because knowledge begins with fear. Now let me bring it back to Yah and us, right? Because that's what we're talking about as a nation of people. Once the Christian church and other religions took fear out of us from Yah, because they said, you know, you get saved at two years and five years old. Well, you say the rest of your life. You ain't got no worry about it. You say it one time and blah, blah, blah. Walk the aisle, shake hands, bow down to white Jesus. I ain't going on. Uh, they basically say you good for life. And once they say that, all fear leaves. And as a result, once you are no longer afraid of Yah, you don't see any reason to worship him. You don't see any reason to walk in the law, studies and the commandments. You don't see any reason to learn the Bible. For what? Because you don't fear him. You don't fear him. You don't fear what Yah would do. You fear. And, and it's funny what the oppressor and the beast does. The beast and the oppressor, which is the same, one and the same has created in us a fear of him. He's like, you're going to respect me you going because I'm going to terrorize you. And that's what you see in, in the whole slavery thing. That's what you see in these beatings, this police brutality. That's what you see when you see people hanging on, hanging from trees, blah, blah, blah. What were they doing when the lynching and the open mob, the burning people, the, the, the dragging people behind trucks, what was all that for? It was to create a particular level of fear so that they could then push their agenda. They wanted you to fear them, but they didn't have that same mindset when it came to fearing Yah. They told you when it came to Yah, you ain't even got to read. And so therefore, we have a problem as a nation of people when the pastor and the preacher and the churches and everybody tell you, you don't have to fear y'all. And therefore, you're never going to get to the very beginning of knowledge and wisdom. You can fear the gorilla, but you don't fear the, the one who made the gorilla. You can fear the mountain, but you don't know the one that pushed up the You don't fear the one that pushed up the mountain. They tell you, man, you need to have a healthy fear for that sea, but you don't know the one that made the sea. You don't fear him. You fear the lion, but you don't fear the one that put the fangs in the lion's mouth and could tell the lion, sit down, shut up. Don't bother him tonight. He, he's my son. Let him sleep. You don't fear that one. And you fear man. You'll fear someone like a Mike Tyson, but you won't fear Hamashiach. You don't, you don't want to mess. People will tell you, man, you don't want to mess with so and so but you want to mess with our king now. So we have to put the fear, healthy fear, survival fear. I'm not talking about this traumatic stuff. Oh, and by the way, nervous and fear is two different things. Not for this video right now, but just 
just in the future. Understand that the fear I'm talking about has to do with life and death. And so the fear of Yah is the beginning of, watch this, man, it's time. The fear of Yah is the beginning of knowledge. Now, later we're going to find out it's the beginning of wisdom. It's the, we're going to, it's the beginning of understanding. But for this verse, it's the beginning of knowledge. And then he says, but fools. Who? Fools. Who? No, nah, Maury, that's not in the Bible. Yeah, it is in the Bible. Fools. 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 Fool. What do fools do? They despise Torah. they like, I'm not getting ready to read no Bible. They despise it. It's been done away with. That's despising it. When you say, I despise, when, I, when you say, I don't follow the Old Testament, it's saying, I despise the Old Testament. It's the word. It's done away with. I'm not doing it. And he said, only fools do that. So now we're living in a nation we're living in a world that despises wisdom and instructions. They have no fear of Yah. So therefore, they're not even going to try the Torah, even though we know that's the only answer to our problem. They despise it. When I even mentioned this to some people earlier, um, they were saying, well, you already know ain't nobody going to do that, man. I'm like, so you despise Torah that much that you don't even want to hear a person say, well, let's look in the Bible and see how we should respond to this situation or that situation. Oh, man, we ain't dealing with the Bible right now, man. And then they'll say something dumb like this. We deal with real life. Israel, we got to do better. <laughs> we don't want to be in that category of being called a fool who despise wisdom and instruction. No, we want to have the healthy, righteous fear of Yah. I was going to put this in, and I know my time is up, but I was going to, oh, I'm going to put it in real fast. There were two thieves on the on, crucified at the same time of Hamashiach. And what was really interesting is through all of that crucifixion scene and I don't have time to deal with it all but you see three people being nailed to a tree and they each have a crossbar a cross beam and they're already being nailed they're already hanging I want you to think about this and one of the thieves started talking negatively about Hamashiach who was also hanging from a cross beam nailed to a tree. The other thief the thief turned to the other thief <laughs> the thief on the right turned to the thief on the left and said man don't you fear Yah? I said, whoa. You talking about thugs, rogues? This, this, these, this, these people may have been uh, gang bangers, leaders, insurrectionists. They don't, and, and watch this. This the kind the people that was hung up here were was called notorious criminals. And these are the roughest of the rough, the toughest of the tough all around here talking about I don't fear nobody. Even when it came to the crucifixion, they already been nailed. And that fella looked over and said, Man, you don't fear ya? That's the word. So I, I understand you can walk around here. But look what our life got us. Look, look, look where doing our own thing got us. We ain't up here because we innocent. We're up here because we broke all the laws that was in the commandments. You know it as well as I do. 
We did not fear Yah, and that's what put us in this situation. Not him. He he is innocent, and you know it, and I know it. He said, we are under the same condemnation. Watch this. He said, but you don't fear Yah. You going to hell, man. See, all of this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we had outside of Yah ended up getting us on this cross to die. But I tell you one thing. There is one fear that struck into one of them brothers' hearts. He said, you know what? <laughs> I fear y'all. I'm going to be honest, man. And he said, Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I can't speak for this Negro over here talking about he ain't got no fear. I don't know what this is all about. But I know that there's something more to life because I tried it this way and my way and look at where it got me. What I'm asking for you is that can you just remember me? See, I fear you. When you come into your kingdom, when the whole world realizes that you're the king, would you just remember me? And Hamashach looked over at him. the beginning and this day you are going to be with me in paradise <laughs> if we're going to be with him in paradise it starts with what the beginning and the fear of Yah is the beginning of knowledge. It's the fool that despises wisdom, biblical, Torah, and instructions. That's our meditation for tonight. Prayerfully in the morning, Abba bless us. As we continue in that Revelation chapter 14. Ooh we Before tonight, just wanted to leave that with you. The beginning of knowledge. The real beginning is fear of Yah. If we want to see a better life, a better community, better families, better personal behavior, we want to see all of that. It begins with the fear of Yah. The fear of Yah opens us up to receive the instructions of Yah. And as we learn more and more about him, we learn that he's kind and loving and just and long-suffering and all that. But first and foremost, we need to know that he's the king and that he has the power of life and death in his hands. He is the one who holds the keys to the kingdom, Zion. This is just a meditation. One love, stay strong, we got to know better so we can do better. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If these messages are encouraging you, helping you, consider helping the ark. We appreciate you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One love. Share this video. Let the world know. It begins with a healthy fear of our king. That's the beginning of knowledge. And it's the fool who despises wisdom and instruction. Shalom.